about 31, I had a question coming out of section 4.1, number 89. And this is when we were asked, hey, are these tables representing, or are the numbers in these tables representing a linear function? And if they are, find a linear model. So a linear function means you have constant growth. So for every x change, the y change is constant. So what I mean by that is, if we look at how our x's are changing, they're all going by plus fives. And then if we look at our y's, what is happening to our y's? Well, to get from 5 to negative 10, I would have lost 15. To get from negative 10 to negative 25, I would have lost 15. And similarly, from negative 25 to negative 40. So this is a constant rate of change. And when you have a constant rate of change, you are looking at a linear function. And again, when I say it's constant, I mean that these were the same numbers, right? This was consistently negative 15, and this was consistently positive 5. And so those ratios, if I keep looking at those change in y over change in x, and I did it here, we're going to have a constant rate of change. And that constant rate of change, sure enough, is our slope. So at this point, I can plug my formula into a couple things. You could do point slope form. All right, that would have been y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And you know your slope is 3, or negative 3, excuse me. We found that. And you can use any point you want. But because I could use any point, and because they did happen to give me the y-intercept, it's also just as simple, or just as easy, maybe even slightly faster, to put it into um, slope-intercept form. Let me write that. So slope-intercept... would be y equals mx plus b. So from here, I can directly say, well, this would be y was equal to negative 3x, and then the y-coordinate of my y-intercept is 5, and I get there. Now, if you didn't see that, which is fine, and you said, okay, let me go ahead and use slope inter or point slope form, I'll just use a different point just to show us. So I'm going to use 5 and negative 10. So if I continue off of this, I could have had y minus a negative 10 is equal to negative 3, times x minus 5. And let's start simplifying that. That would be y plus 10 equals negative 3x plus 15. And then when I subtract 10 from both sides, sure enough, I get y equals negative 3x plus 5, right? And you're going to get that no matter which ordered pair you use because that's the equation of the line. And then we're asked to put that in function notation, or I'm going to put it in function notation specifically because this problem had function notation in it. So that's why you see me writing this final answer. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.